Our medical director, Eric Lewis, um, is starting his sabbatical today. Um, our state license has been changed to reflect Dr. Rose's um, position as interim medical director. Um, he went around yesterday making sure there was closure in each and every little bit of whatever we needed to do. Mm -hmm. All of our residents that, um, uh, that Dr. Um, Lewis took care of, um, residents and family members have accepted for that interim time while he's on sabbatical another physician. They so have to accept that? They have to accept. He, they can't just be unattended or have oh, I don't mean that, yeah. but I mean they approve of the doctor that we have really? to have that in writing. So really? it, it has, it, 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 I mean, I'm just bringing it up just so that let's everyone say, knows. Let, let's say they don't approve of Dr. Lewis. Then what do you do? Well, we have other physicians coming now, but it could be Dr. Rose, it could be whatever, but it just, they have to accept the physician because it's a choice. It's one of the resident yeah. rights. So um, the, making sure that we have closure for this, uh, for his sabbatical has, the staff has worked um, okay. very hard to, to do that. We do have an, uh, a neighborhood gardens and landscaping meeting today at noon. I think some of the discussion will be the issues of getting the the pergolas, all that, all of that, uh, all of that, those pieces of equipment moved up. Whether we know exactly where it's going at the moment, yeah, no, yeah. but okay. we need to move it. Hmm. Um, Medicaid cost report is in progress. I believe this <coughs> auditing started here, yeah. which then goes out, and we have to have that in by the end of the month. Um, our CON, or Certificate of Need, annual report is in progress. Um, that has to be submitted by the beginning of April. And this is a completion? Or? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, if, if we have every single bill that is that is there, I feel as though it's a completion. But there may be a couple of things. I think I would feel more comfortable sending in an annual, annual report saying it's 99 and 9 tenths percent complete and then yeah. um, making sure that everything is 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 clear when yeah. we do that the complete report would you get with Kathy Armstrong mm -hmm. to make sure that we've got all of the bills either in the operating budget or in the new nursing home I will do that. get those straightened out so we can come to some kind of conclusion on that okay. funding yeah. and then the, uh, the the last thing I'd like to mention um, is that when we're doing budget preparation, it's very difficult um, to, when you look at rehab services, and, and I know that we, and I'm challenged by the three of you saying, well, you did this last year, I mean, there must be an endpoint as far as rehab services. Um, the concern that we had when we did our budget this year is that our Medicaid, Medicare reimbursement for our skilled residents um, would, uh, would be decreased by 11.1%. And I'm sorry, this says Medicare B, it should be Medicare A, uh, Part A. So what we did is we looked at February the other day just to make sure we we're in the right ballpark because we did look um, at um, more reimbursement in those areas. Speech, um, in 2011, we did five, uh, 575 minutes in February. In 2012, we did 2,300 minutes. Physical, and this is this is direct resident contact. This isn't um, charting or, or whatever. Uh, physical therapy for 2011, we uh, uh, 3,300 minutes. In 2012, the same month, uh, 5,000 minutes. Occupational therapy, 2,900 minutes. Um, and in February of 2012, 4,500 minutes. So the difference in the month of February f from last year to this year, Last year was 6,775 minutes. This year is 11,800 minutes. So I'm very, I'm very pleased um, with that. What would you say is the reason, major reason for the big increase? Um, I think it's a, a patient type, uh, um, also coupled with our staffing. Um, and again, you know, resident need is either we assess or we reassess or if there's a decline or what have you. But again, it's looking, we're looking at patient type and staffing, um, which is certainly... Facility? Facility use has nothing to do with it? Well, I think we're able to treat people um, uh, in a more efficient manner. Um, and I think it all works together, um, Commissioner. But um, obviously it's a, it's a much better facility to do any of the right. the things that need to be um, done Just in the ease gym. Of, ease of movement, I would imagine. Yeah, right, right. How are these, how do these come about? Do they come about 
as a request from a resident or is it based on somebody uh, analyzing or, or saying that this particular resident needs more speech therapy? Uh, okay. How does that? How We're does looking that at start? Medicare Part um, Part A, which is our skilled resident, which means that there must have been a three-day qualifying stay, and they have up to 100 days of, of um, therapy as as they need it. Um, I think with, but in talking about rehab in general, um, there there could be um, a request for an evaluation <coughs> by um, certainly by the physician, um, mm -hmm. and that has there has to be an order. But if um, I, as a caregiver, saw that there was a decline, I would uh, talk to the physician and the, and the rehab department, mm -hmm. and or the resident could request or and or family, family. member. Yeah. So you know, it, it, we're all looking at it from the same you know the same um, direction as far as the benefit and the treatment you know, and get them get the resident to the best functional ability. Pro pro is there possible. a limit on the time? Yeah, there is a limit, and I don't have all of the. All in other words, days or not minutes to the day? They have, there's a, a maximum for Medicare residents under the skilled benefit, which is Medicare A, of up to 100 days of treatment. And, um, but then they could move to a Medicare B status, which, um, again, um, they can be treated. But again, that there, there are some limitations, and those just, the limitations just changed, I believe, Commissioner not too long ago, so I don't want to do that off the top of my head. Okay. Um, regarding the electrical bills at the new nursing home, um, I went back and found from EGA where they had estimated um, in the ballpark that you are budgeting for now um, on an annual basis and I can't remember exactly, but uh, your budget right now falls roughly in the middle of the range that they had predicted. Um, and I, I, I guess the question is, is, is there anything that you can do to try to reduce the medical, uh, the uh, electrical? electrical. Uh, uh, Bob has been sure? worked, uh, I have been working with Bob, and we've both been working with the staff in regard to Changing the you know the lights, quarter lights, the the um, any of the lights on and off. Now that we're in, we we mm -hmm. our our yeah. lighting has changed because of the um, changing of the clocks. Right. Um, again, we're looking at it so that we're we're using the lights that we need to use during mm -hmm. when we need when we need to use it. But I think being really cognizant of of the um, the multi-purpose areas, um, some of the other areas, a lot of our. Um, uh, public areas. A lot of our um, offices, you know, they're on electric, I mean, automatic switches now. So yeah. then if there's movement, the lights turn on. If there's no movement... Yeah. So they can't sleep while they're in the office. That's right. That's right. Okay. So you better be doing something. I mean, but the... So we... Those efficiencies have been in, but we continually look at what can we program so that the lights will turn off sooner. And um, But mm -hmm. yet we want to make sure that we have good lighting for the residents when they're mo yeah. moving around. Do you know how... Probably I should ask Bob the question, how long those outside lights are on? Are they on all night? Um, there are some lights that are on all night, yes. In the parking lot? Yeah. yeah. Have you had any problems or any complaints regarding the plowing, the last storm especially? I don't, I, I'm not sure the last storm because... I don't mean complaints, but any comments regarding the plowing? Um, I, I was not here the day of the storm, yeah. but I will tell you that we've been working hard with, um, with Will. Um, working with staff as far as parking um, in regard to entrances and exits. Um, mm -hmm. And I believe they're, we're trying to work as a team so everyone is aware where they need to be par parking because for us it's a little different because we well, we have people in our building all of the time and, and uh, yeah. that's important. Okay, I okay. know he tries to keep the, um, the parking areas or at least the roads open for emergency vehicles, mm -hmm. that's a top priority with him. Mm -hmm. um, and as long as, this is the first year really at the new nursing home, so it's, it's got to, things have to be worked out as to where people park and how it's plowed and so forth. So. And, it, and that has been established as an, an effort with the nursing supervisor, with staff, with Bob, myself, mm -hmm. and Will. And I think, yeah. 
I think that you know <coughs> it was we had a few bumps in the road, but I think that he you know he's really yeah. been yeah. open. And I was here. I think it was Saturday. We had a little bit of snow, and I was here five thirty six o'clock yet uh, Saturday morning. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, he was working on the walkways and things. And and I you know I it's 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 a tough job. Yeah. I, I wouldn't want to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Uh, just a question. Are you um, are you aware that there is a meeting in Maltonboro tomorrow, uh, Friday, with Commissioner Tumpus and uh, uh, Executive Counselor Ray Burton? Actually, I'm not. I, when I saw when I received an email, I saw there was a meeting scheduled for Littleton and some other. Yeah, this one is local. Local. And Regarding that's Friday. Uh, it's. It's not bring up anything you yeah, want. It's an open forum, and um, you know, you're, it gives you an opportunity to, to speak to Commissioner Tumpus mm -hmm. uh, one on one in regard to uh, some of your concerns. Um, Check with Malton Borough to make sure that it's still on. Okay. Thank you very much. I I I, I looked in the the communities where I thought it was being yeah. scheduled. It's too far. Away. I always wait for the one that comes to Malton Borough. Okay. Uh, Monday. The chairman of the delegation wants to get the budget done and completed Monday, so um, make sure you're up to date on any of those kinds of questions that may come up that the subcommittee may have raised. Um, I know electrical may be one that I'll try to handle. Um, it seems like there was another one, but I can't remember it right now. Fuel, I think it was for heating. Is there a schedule? I haven't seen a schedule. All I know, they'll probably start right from the beginning with commissioners and go right down through. I've requested that we that they take action on Hale's location budget first because I think that's a simple one to get it out of the way. Uh, and then the second one would be the union contract with the nursing home to get that out of the way um, because I know they can spend hours on the budget and they will probably on certain areas and um, as you know they've ordered lunch for <coughs> representatives because they're going to be here whatever it takes to get the job done I guess so just be ready okay all right thank you thank you Rob you may want to you want to stay, stay on this one I'm going to stay okay with <clears throat> Good morning. I wanted to discuss the actual food cost for the first two months of 2012. And I know you have directed us to alert you in any line item when we see that there may be a variance increase over $1,000. So food costs this year is pretty challenging. And I, I'm predicting, you know, that without some changes, you know, that we will exceed what our budgeted amount is for food costs for the year. Anticipating that, you know, we made changes because, you know, I, I keep track of, you know, what the predicted inflationary index mm -hmm. is from the USDA. I, I, it's really understated based on, on our actual experience and mm -hmm. seems to be driven by fuel costs. And, and taking into consideration the revenue to offset it? Did you yeah, do so, that? Well, that's that's really what I want to discuss, okay. you know, so that you can have a clear idea of where we are, and then how I can okay. make sure that it's accurate so, for you. So what you're saying is the prices is, is going up due to inflationary costs. Yes. So you know I see that from pricing, you know, on a weekly basis. We we receive food three three times per week. So I just wanted to let you know where we stand right now. These are invoices that I book at Dietary as we receive them. So th this is as close to actual for a particular month as I can get. It may not reflect the same dollar amount 
that we would get from accounting here because I'm not sure exactly what batch is paid and what the date is of that invoice. So I'm, I'm booking it based on the date that we receive this. Mm -hmm. So this is internal um, dietary figure. So for January, um, our actual expense was $43,149 on a budget of 42 1036 and in February the actual was 41383 budget of 39324 so for, for the first 2 months we exceeded budget by $3172 on food on the right hand side are, are the non food items paper chemicals supply items and we were under budget for the first 2 months by $1,215. When you compare that to prior year in 2011, our first two months was 74795 So there's a variance of 11.5% from prior year actual to the first two months of 2012 actual. So that's um. that being said, I, you know, I want to let you know, and I have reported this before, let you know that we did change our group purchasing organization this year to a more aggressive and a larger GPO so that our pricing is as competitive as it can get. We're getting national pricing through the UHF purchasing group, which subcontracts with a company called Integra. And Integra is a branch of Sedexa, which is a contract food company, mm -hmm. one of the largest in the country. So we leverage the pricing as if we were one of the largest buyers that there is in the country. And we have national pricing through Cisco. So that, that's helping. I've also, on number two, revised the menus to avoid extremely expensive items and things that I see that are increasing rapidly. So we have the ability with our computer program to change items and we forecast what expenses will be mm -hmm. and then I just go in and make some changes where I see that there is an opportunity to still serve a good meal but at a less expense. Are we, are we sacrificing uh, food quality not for the for no, pricing. No, we're just changing <coughs> menu items. I mean, you know, if it's a pork roast and pork is high, I may avoid that and put put on you know a stir fry or something like that. Okay. And then I'm, I've also gone in and we've revised the stock supplies that we send up to the neighborhoods of the nursing home to make sure that we're able to have control as best I can of what the what the item is. For example, we eliminated the small cans of soda and we're now using liter bottles. We've mm -hmm. eliminated the small cartons of milk and we have gallons of milk now. So I'm just where I can save, you know, a penny here, a dime here, yeah. it adds up. Yeah. Hmm. You know, and I, I work with nursing to let them know also, you know, what we're doing. Yeah where we had been buying you know, snack pack puddings that are pre-packaged, you know, we're now preparing it from scratch and then packaging it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now when you do that in the kitchen, then that gets sent up in bulk to these different neighborhoods? Well, we have to, we individually package it if it's, if it's something <coughs> like a pudding and yeah. it has a use-by date because yeah. we have to make sure that it's rotated and it doesn't sit there longer. But I mean, is it uh, sent up to the neighborhoods in bulk and then they distributed it out from there? The puddings, for example? They're all, you know, we prepackage them. So oh, you prepackage them? Portions, yes. A lot of times, nursing will use those items also as in their med pass. So, so residents that have a swallowing issue, they may put the medication in the pudding or applesauce, etc. Okay. Okay. So uh, the issues contributing to the higher food costs are, you know, really, as I said, high oil prices, 
The number two item, though, is, is a real concern, and that is the staff free meal issue and the volume of food that we're going through in the cafe compared to prior year. And basically this is because the staff that receive a free meal are going through the line in a buffet uh, setting mm -hmm. where before it w we were controlling portion on the plate. So the volume you know, that we're going through is significantly higher than it was. So it's a... <coughs> It's a teaching moment for our staff, really, that you know portions you know should be self-controlled. So yeah. March being National Nutrition Month, you know, they're I'm I'm going to try to approach it, you know, that they need to be aware of you know portion size and nutrition. Is there a reason why it's now been changed to a buffet style? It's the new facility, the new facility Just designed as you know as a cafe, which you know as a self-service takeout. Mm -hmm. This is for the employees. Yes, and currently. The buffet stuff. Yes, and, and for you know the meals that we sell also. Oh, so, so. Yeah. Uh, number three is you know we're serving free meals to the sheriff's department, county attorney's office, uh, the county administration, and we're recording them, but we're not being reimbursed. Why not? Well, because I don't think that mechanism is there right now, so that's that's really what I'm addressing with you today is is to look at that and either you know design uh, you know the accounting system for 2012 where food costs would be reimbursed based on you know where meals are going, mm -hmm. and then so that that expense doesn't hit dietary and that it you know would be reflected in the department that's taking advantage of that. Can you estimate how much money we're losing as a result of that? The free meals? You're recording who is getting them. And what's a meal cost? Three dollars and something? Yes. You know, so I, I mean the average of three dollars, I mean the, the raw cost of food and supplies and labor is about 225 currently. Okay. Okay. So of course, and, and we, since we are selling meals also, I mean, there, there is that portion where it's not a lot, but it's about you know, sixteen, eighteen hundred dollars a month in cash sales. We, yeah. are, we are selling you know, some retail items, the court, the court uh, spirit court across the street, you know, come over and you know, we, we send them menus electronically and you know, they'll come over there are not a lot of staff there unless there's, you know, cases, but they also are directing juries over mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well. So it works out well for them and for us. Yeah. But I think in the accounting system for 2012 to take that dollar revenue that we're generating and also offset dietary expense should be looked at because right now that is just being put into the general fund of the nursing home. Say that again. The money that we're receiving is going yep. into the in revenue for the nursing home, but it's it's not coming back on my line item for dietary. Sandy has. You know the reason for that? Sandy has a comment. No, I believe it. What when when um, Rob receives his um, revenue and expense report? Yeah. He receives the expense report. On um, it does it is counted on the revenue section of our you know our revenue page yeah. Yeah. under uh, uh, meals but there's a difference and I think Rob there's no delineation between meals for the jail and meals I think is that what you're saying meals for the jail and meals that are coming out of your um, your cafe yeah and, and just where it, it the variance is going to look like we're, we're our food cost is higher but it will be higher because we are selling more meals that won't reflect from prior year. Mm -hmm. So if someone just comes in and looks at that line item 050 food cost, they'll they'll say, well, wait a minute, you know, this is running higher, and they're not going to see. Oh, okay, that's because you know they're selling two thousand dollars a month more. Yeah. So I just wanted to point that out, and you know. Recommend, my recommendation is just my recommendation, but 
I mean, I, I would think that we should be looking at, you know, the free meal issue, and I would hope that we can phase that out and go to a, you know, cash basis for... What would you, uh, what would you charge for a lunch? Well, we could, I, again, my cost is about 225 yeah. you know, so... $3 then? Yeah, I mean, there, there could be two prices. There could be a, a price for a non-county employee, and there could be a discount for a county employee, you know, so um, that we... I think that confuses things. We ought to charge one figure for everybody. So, you know, we have, we have pricing right now because I do have a cash register, so, right. you know, we're, right. it really depends on what somebody selects. I mean, we so also... They, yeah, they pick and choose, so... We, and, and we're selling sandwiches as well, you know, at a pretty yeah. good, I mean, we're, we're getting our expenses back, but, you know, we're producing a six-ounce sandwich like a Subway sub for $2. That's a pretty good deal. Mm -hmm. And it's bread that we bake on this premises. You can't, you can't get a sub anyplace else for two bucks. You can't get anything anyplace else for two bucks. I mean, it's got to be five ninety-five <laughs> or something it's at least. pretty good value. So what's your recommendation? Yeah, there it is. <coughs> well, I, I, my recommendation, I put it down in writing and just said, you know, phase out the free meal for county employees except where union contract provision provides it. Uh, B, drop the free meal from future union contracts and That'll be hard. <laughs> authorize MVC to charge out free meal expenses to other departments and credit food costs. Well, Something we can't do, and you know, maybe the, there yeah. would be, you know, at least some movement for planning in the future. Well, I'd be in support. I like to throw it out for discussion. What are we, as a board, regarding the free meals that are going to the sheriff's department? Anybody else other than the jail and the nursing home? Um, my feeling is that we ought to charge them for it. And then we ought to charge three dollars, and that includes our office, it includes us. Yeah, I think yeah, but I think it ha we'll have to phase it in slowly. I would say the first of April. We can't. We got to phase it in quicker than that. If he's going uh, three thousand in the hole every month. Um, now, hopefully, I, I, you know, I've I've made changes that won't be reflected on this, but. I mean, I, I'm always looking at cost and trying to react to it to keep the budget in line. So, you know, I'm hoping to be able to do that. If I had to be explaining where that $3,000 went, you know, I could, I can explain it, you know, certainly in, in increased... Food costs. Yeah, and, and free meals going out where the Sheriff's Department is using, you know, the facility much more than prior years because it's convenient and it lends itself to... Yeah you know, a nice location for a meal. Well, how do you... I, I have, you know, I, I think that I have no objection to um, to other county employees other than those under union contract um, get paying for it. I would like to see it, though. This is the halfway through March. I, I mm -hmm. give them give them some notice and, and perhaps the 15th of April instead of the 1st of April, just to give them some notice. Asha, how do you feel about it? Well, today is March 14th, so if we give them today notice, I think they have enough notice starting April 1st. And the free meals is going to the jail and the nursing home only well, the, people by contract, by, contracts? By contract, we need to be providing a meal um, for the employees of the nursing home. Mm -hmm. And Department of Correction, we send over, it's whatever the staff count is of that particular me meal. So right. it's like six in breakfast, and sometimes it's, you know, eight or ten at lunchtime, and six on the... But it's in their budget, right? Yes, yes. In that budget... And, and we, are, meals. we are charging for that now, so that they're, they're being expensed for all of their meals, including the staff meals. 
Wait a minute. What do you, what do you mean? What happens? I thought we were charging all along. There's a certain amount of money that's in the jail budget that goes right. to the nursing home, right? Well, for meals. Right, and it's and and they're, they're, it is costed to their their account. So basically, it's the jail and it's 